I've got a great little tool here called Product Lifecycle, which I'd just like to run through for you. And for, for those of you that have not seen something like this before, it comes on a blank piece of paper, just very similar to this one here. And that is going to be replaced by the time I finish it today with this one here. So when you look at the thing called a product life cycle, you need to now consider what are the products or services within your business which may be affected by the economy, by uh, competitors, by new technology that comes out. Uh, one of the things that's happening a lot nowadays in the accounting profession is a lot of people are outsourcing and getting affected by technology. So they're outsourcing a lot to India, the Philippines, and technology like cloud-based computing is now affecting the profitability of the accounting industry. So they're going through a massive amount of change at the moment and some of it is not welcome. So what you want to be doing when you look at this thing, this model behind me, is consider where does your business fit into this. So if I put some examples up here, and I'll just step you through the heading. So we have the introduction of the product or service, the growth in that product or service, maturity, and then it goes into the client. So typically what happens down here on the left hand side, we have a heading called capital involvement, investment. So when a, a new thing is being built, it's where a lot of research is being done and lots of money is being spent to get it positioned so that it can be launched. That's not where you want to be. Uh, you come along here and as you move up the scale and you start increasing your volume, you come along to this line here, which is your break even line. And that's when the profits start to come back and you start to get a bit of a return on your capital investment at, that you put, pumped into your company and into that product launch. So the types of things that uh, are currently going into uh, decline would be things like typewriters. Uh, other things going to line would be telex machines. Uh, other things going in would be vinyl records. And cassettes. So a lot of those there, it, you wouldn't want to be going out there and starting a business now dealing in those types of products because there's just not enough to much demand. There is specialist demand, especially for vinyl records now. They're seeing a bit of a resurgence, but it's not the type of thing that if you wanted to go out and start a small business, it's okay having a niche market, but I don't know if you'd want to go out there and start working in vinyl records or telex machines. I think they're a bit gone by the way. Into maturity, you've got things like colour TV, microwaves, uh, lawn mowers, and that's where you look at, well, everybody's got a lawn mower. That's what I mean. That's a market that is in maturity. It's well established. Everybody that wants a lawn mower has typically got a lawn mower. And there's not a lot of new innovations in lawnmower. They've been around for dozens and dozens of years. So uh, obviously another one that goes down here is photocopiers. But that also is being affected by technology as well because you're, you're introducing scanners now into the same photocopier technology. And that's speeding up a lot of things where documents are no longer, like the idea of having filing cabinets nowadays not many businesses have got filing cabinets. So consequently, if you were selling suspension folders, suspension folders that go inside your filing cabinet, because you're not selling a lot of filing cabinets because of document scanning and electronic media such as emails now, people don't send as many hard copy documents through the post as they used to, so therefore they don't need to be stored uh, or kept. Uh, some of the growth industries that you've got are home services, Uh, home coffee machines. Everybody seems to have a home coffee machine nowadays. Uh, home security. And laptops, obviously. Uh, mobile phones. So these are certainly in the growth phase and that's where there's very strong take up. But they started from somewhere. Now, some of the startup introductions that are happening now is plasma TVs 
and then we've got digital cameras uh, home theater software it used to be years ago you would go down to a retail shop to buy your software you go down and buy your MIB your QuickBooks your Microsoft Office and now all of those are available for download online and that is saving an absolute bucket load of money to the suppliers to the people who have got the distribution agreements they're now offering just one major set of software and that downloads via the internet onto your machine so consequently that whole um, market segment of having a retailer selling you the box with the product inside it that's now evaporated so software providers and obviously one of the latest technologies that's just now hitting and the, the marketplace is going to be affected by this for at least another five to ten years where there's going to be unbelievable change changes we don't even can perceive today and that's going to be cloud so cloud computing is having a massive change in the planet and that required strong capital investment to get things to happen and now all of your major software suppliers are now responding because they're, they're delivering their products now uh, primarily the new thing that's happened recently is you don't go out and buy your software and pay three four five six seven hundred dollars for the software you now subscribe to the software and they constantly update it and keep you updated but if you miss your payment you're disconnected from that software so this is a tool that I'd suggest is worthwhile you considering for your business and just start mapping them all. What is currently in decline in your industry? In the smash repair industry, the vehicles are getting so smart now, they've got technology where they won't allow vehicles to go too close to the vehicle in front. You've got uh, some of the latest Mitsubishis, which have now got uh, sensors that tell if you're on a highway and you're moving over in your lane your your steering wheel will start to vibrate so there's these technologies that are going to reduce the frequency of accidents except for the nut behind the wheel the per, the, the people faults will still exist but the chances of us now having an accident that we're getting uh, more and more technology working with us to reduce that so that's going to obviously affect people involved with the smash repair industry people involved with the insurance industry so this model here is designed for you to consider what's changing in your industry and what can you do about it if you have any questions or problems or you'd like to contact me please send me an email the address is on the website uh, or also because you're watching this video on YouTube please if you like these videos give me a thumb, thumbs up Thanks, and I wish you all of the best with this tool.